So today's session we are talking about uh, Johansson model. So it's also known as vector error correction model. So um, it is used when the set of variables that you proposed in a Johansson approach uh, tend to make more than one equilibrium. Means their combinations have more than one dependent variable. So if you assume that there is only one dependent variable, what will happen? It will lead to endogeneity or simultaneity problem uh, in ARDL or ECM approach. So what will happen? That it will create inconsistent results. So this multi-equilibrium ECM model, how how we can check it? So so suppose there is a there are set of three variables: exchange rate, domestic prices, and foreign prices. This set of three variables can have uh, uh, other combinations like domestic prices that are also function of exchange rate and foreign prices. Further, foreign prices are also function of domestic and exchange rate. So it means your technical, technically the three variables that you proposed could have three different models. So if you assume the second or third model does not exist, then what will happen? It will lead to endogeneity in the first model. So what will happen? We will we'll make a vector of these variables like this. So this is the long run vector and this is a short run vector then and and this is the ecm vector so we will estimate using this is a, a ecm and then we, it is multiplied and the coefficients are different so this is a co-integrating vector uh, co, co integration matrix we check if it is uh, significant so that there is co-integration and and this model is used so now we go towards our studio to see uh, how it works. So let's go back and go towards its this model. So it will start from here. So yes. So let me choose, let me start it. So this Johansson test for that first of all we need to set seed so that it does not give different estimation results every time we do it because it will do some iteration. And, and and simulations so when i run set seed it will fix the window of randomness so this is johnson test this is co integration johnson so first of all what is var vdt this the command is shown above so i will select the var dt command from here so let's pick it up and move it here and then what will happen the, the other commands are will not be working so for that i will go up and pick it up the other commands that are shown here so that there is a complete set and there's one more command left this one so in a war model you need to declare each variable as a different uh, as a separate data set so that it, it, it can work as a different data. so this tdp is a new data set it selects the log of variable and starts from 1982 annually and added uh, 2016 annually and it has frequency one so uh, it will when i run it let's show you the window screen so it will make a new variable shown here it's a data values similarly all three variables are converted into data variables so you will be able to see them here now I will I will just join these data files. So VARDT is a window NTS union. So it's a vector set. Okay. So it has uh, 35 observation and four columns. Okay. So now I will pick this window and I will use the trace integration test and use two lag order and and then use constant as an uh, uh, allow the constant and then see the long run approach so when i run this and sh sh let us let it let it to show me the johansson test so if you can see it here so it has given us the test value so uh, how you read it so you will read this line first uh, r zero means no co-integration and this is a null hypothesis so if test value is higher than the critical values at least at 10 percent and 10 and 5 percent so it means uh, R0 is not true, R1 is true. Then we go towards this. So null hypothesis is R is equal to one and alternate is R greater than one. So it is insignificant. It means 
uh, r is not greater than 1 and r is equal to 0 it means there is one co-integration so if if you are able to confirm one co-integration here there are two options now either to estimate the ecr vector error correction model because it is more efficient it is allowing for the reverse causalities or to go towards the ecm model or the ardl model because you have confirmed that there is only one co-integration so it means there is no endogeneity in the simple equation or single equation ardl johansson ardl bounds test okay this way you you are able to estimate the model now uh, let's go so this is the the coefficient uh, this the estimation results but we can look at that from the different equation let's go back to and so johansson test says that there is co-integration now we can plot this line by uh, using this equation shown here so s is equal to 1 into gdp uh, 0.63 into s s e r 0.66 is into ind 0.5998 into agriculture and minus 61.62 as constant so i can plot it and this plot will show us the the pattern of uh, the the equilibrium so you can see it here as that the that the equilibrium is moving uh, uh, lower than zero and and it should be between zero and the mean value should be in between so it means that model is not perfectly depicting a good equilibrium or the in reality the the, the data shown for the, the country which is being discussed may have very very unstable uh, background so that the, the, the equilibrium is changing a lot okay so this is a plot that can that shows about the equilibrium movements now what we do is we'll uh, we'll check for stationarity of this residual uh, this equilibrium and it is it is insignificant uh, it's significant uh, at 10 percent so the variable there is condition but it's very low value means the, the, we are able we seen it in the graph that uh, the equilibrium was not working so that any other diagnostic will pick it up now we since there is a co-integration in the johansson test we go towards the ecm model so vcm johansson is vcm is equal to the data data set var data file lag 2 and maximum likelihood approach when i run it it will estimate the model in the background and I, if i want to do a summary so it will show me the results so let us let it load so you can see it here that it has estimated the model so the long run equation is uh, gdp1 ser industry and agriculture these are the coefficients okay so what has happened there is uh, now the error correction component for each model so for gdp model it is negative and insignificant significant means there is convergence uh, but for others they, they are not significant okay and intercept value is there for each model and and all other variables are there for each model so you can uh, this is the uh, the results for each variable now we go towards uh, other other estimation results so now we check for if we run this approach what it will show it will show us results for let's open it up so for each equation so these are the short term results so gdp difference and all other variables are difference and the ect is negative so there is a negative uh, coefficient and these are the short run results and this is the long run result this way you can estimate long run and short run and then we go to what's next so next we want to do is to estimate uh, uh, to see if uh, the next is the uh, structured vector error correction model so these commands actually make the, the matrix and then and then estimate the structural vector correction model so when i estimate these you will be able to see the tables for structural vector correction model and here 
it is uh, uh, testing for each variable one by one. So this is long run impact. So GDP and the long run impact of these variables are here and its standard errors are there. So you can divide it to calculate the T values. So this way the long run and then when you estimate this is the stability test model. So when you estimate this, this is the impulse response function. So when I run this, so this is the detail table. I will copy it up, copy this command and paste it here so that we can discuss all the tables that are being shown. So when I run this, it will give me first graph that is a, the impulse response from GDP to GDP. So we can see that if there is 1% increase in GDP, it will have a positive effect on future GDP values. So GDP itself affects itself, that is logical. But for services to GDP, it is on zero line and, and, and the critical values are, uh, the zero is between the critical values and the black line is also near to zero. It means there is no effect of increase in services on GDP. And then we go plus, and this is industry. So there's no effect of industry on GDP because it's between the critical values. Then there is for agriculture, it is also zero is between the critical values, so no effect. So this is the problem that was shown there that uh, that's why the equilibrium was not working because the set of variables are not uh, affecting the, uh, not affecting the GDP in long run. So it means the model is not appropriate. So we need to find appropriate variables so that we can estimate this model. So this was the Johansson, Johansson, Johansson uh, vector recollection model in our studio. Hopefully you will be able to recreate it for your own variables and then uh, to make your projects.